Visual Basics Syntax Part 2. We're going to go over concepts relating to syntax, building off of what we learned in the first video, but with some more complicated examples. Let's take a look. From the workbook, open up your Visual Basic Editor with Alt F11. Now, if you haven't saved your workbook as a .xlsm, go ahead and do that now. Then, go into your editor, and within any of these objects, you can right-click to go down to Insert, and then add a module. If you already have one, then just go ahead and proceed. Go into your module and name your procedure sub my var. So what we're going to start out here with is declaring a variable. Declaring a variable is basically taking a variable name that we want to create so that we can refer to something later in our code and telling the application what kind of variable we're creating. So right now we're not actually making any assignment and we're not storing information. We're merely setting ourselves up to tell the application what the variable type is. And so for example, the workbook is a workbook type variable. A specific sheet is a, sh is a worksheet type variable. A specific range is a range type variable. And it should be pretty intuitive. So I always start out with dim. I kind of think of dim as similar to the word the, and it's declaring a statement of variable type. So you want to use variable names that are both descriptive and relatively short to make them easy to type. I like to use wb for workbook, so dim wb as workbook, ws as worksheet, and rng as range. Now, if you wanted to be a little bit more explicit later, keep in mind WB and WS and RNG are very vague. So if I wanted to do something, for example, if I'm working with taxes, maybe I want to type WB tax to be specific that I'm talking about a tax type workbook, or perhaps I'm talking about inventory, then maybe I want to do WS INV and I'm talking about an inventory related worksheet. And you want to come up with a system that works well for you and doesn't get confusing over time. So when I'm making an actual assignment, I always start an object assignment with the word set. So set wb equals, and then do the collections workbooks, and then now specify the exact workbook that you're trying to assign. If I type book1.xlsm, this will refer to the workbook that I currently have open. Keep in mind, if somebody wants to rename your workbook later, this reference will break. If you want to refer exactly to the workbook from which your code originated, you can type this workbook. If you want to refer to the workbook that is currently active, meaning that it's open, it's visible, and it's in front of your user. So this workbook is active. If I have multiple workbooks open, there's only one that's visible to your user at any given time. And even if you paneled the workbooks next to each other, say for example, if you, if you have one on the right and you have one on the left, you really can only have one workbook selected at a given time. So whichever one you have selected is technically active. So you can refer to the active workbook like so. Now with worksheet, I can say set ws equal to sheets. And then this sheet name here has to be sheet three. Feel free to use whatever works best for you. If your workbook doesn't have sheet three, then refer to whichever sheet you happen to have currently in your workbook. Perhaps sheet one is there. So set ws equal to active sheet also works. And so in this case, sheet three is active. If I click on sheet two, now sheet two is active. So what this line is going to assign, the assignment is relative to whatever the user has last selected within your workbook. And next, let's talk about range. So set RNG equal to, we could do range A1. And that's going to be specifically this range. Now, again, it's relative to whichever sheet I have active. If I want to be explicit about which sheet to go to, then I can say RNG equals sheets sheet two dot range a1 and this is going to go exactly to sheet 2 while the other range assignment is going to be relative 
to whichever sheet is active. Now I can use multiple cells when I'm making a range assignment by typing the syntax just a little bit differently. Um, let's like leave the sheet relative and we'll type A1 colon B2 and now we've created a box. This is A1, this is B2. So this range refers to A1 to B2. The first reference here to the left of the colon but inside of the quotes is going to be your upper left corner of the box. The second cell is going to be the bottom right corner of your box. Now you can also refer to an entire column. I caution against this usually because I think that you're probably interacting with more cells within your worksheet than you need to be. Because if I select range A to B and I'm doing the entire column, that goes all the way down to 1,048,576. Now that's probably overkill because my, my best bet is that your data doesn't go all the way down. There's a separate video where we're going to go over later how to find the last row of your data, but just remember for later, interacting with the whole column is usually not necessary. So that's object types. The theme that you want to take away here is that with object type variables, you always want to use set at the beginning of the variable assignment. Okay, now let's move on to data type variables. You always start with the variable name. And you never use set. Okay, the first variable type that we're going to go over is a string. A string is basically any alphanumeric combination, it can be a single character, but it always is denoted with quotes around it. So A, B, C, D, one, two, three, or really whatever I want to type, as long as it has quotes around it. Next, we have a long variable. Now this is an integer type variable. It's a positive or negative whole number with no decimal. If you ever notice in a form or reading somebody else's code where they've used the integer type, that was phased out within Visual Basic and all integer type variables are automatically converted in the language into a long type variable in the background. Next we have a double and this is a floating type integer with extending decimal points. You can round any double number to be a specific decimal point, maybe two or three decimal points, but that is an actual method that you would use separately. Lastly, we're going to go over Boolean, and this is simply true or false. It's a binary assignment and that it can only take one of two values. Now keep in mind, we didn't go over every single data type or variable type that exists within this language, we went over some of the core ones that we're going to be using in the upcoming videos. Next, let's take an object. We're going to extract a property from the object and we're going to assign it to a long. Let's take this range here, A1, and let's Go ahead and copy this line down here. Let me explain what I'm doing and why. As you see, I've used the same variable name over and over and over. So if I was to run this code line by line, the last line that executes is going to be the variable name, uh, the variable assignment that really gets kept going forward. So at this moment in the code, the workbook is being assigned as such. But as soon as I use that same line and I say WB now equals this workbook, it's completely erased the previous assignment and overwritten it with the new assignment. The same is true here that if I had sheet two active and I ran this line of code, that initially I'm assigning WS to sheet three, but since I have sheet two active, as soon as I get to this line of code and run it, sheet two becomes the assignment for WS. 
So for the sake of interacting with RNG as a single cell variable of range A1, I decided to move the line of code from here down to the bottom so that I could run through and make that assignment and have it actually stick, not getting overridden by these lines here. Okay, let's go on. I'm going to type my height equals RNG dot height. We're going to declare these variables just as we did before with the objects. This part isn't a whole lot different. We're just going to type WB, or actually let's do DIM, my height as, if you want to pause the video for a second, think about it if height is a number and it's going to represent the height of a cell, what do you think I'm going to declare this as? Pause the video and see if you can guess. If you guess double, you guess correctly. The thing about a height is that it's not a whole number because heights can have decimals. For example, you wouldn't just say I'm five feet tall, you would say I'm five feet 11 tall, I'm five feet and 11 inches. Even then, you're not exactly that many inches tall. You're a certain number of uh, an infinite decimal point. If we were to actually describe your height in an exact me measurement, it's not going to be anything specific. So to give you an example, if you were to right click on any row, you can go down to row height. You can see that the default, default value is 15 and you can write 17.25 and it will become exactly that height. So going back now, let's do a string example. And we'll go ahead and interact with one of the objects that we've created up here at the top. And let's use WB, which is a workbook that we've assigned to the last assignment here is going to be set WB equal to active workbook. So my path equals WB.path. And what's happening here is I'm extracting the path, which is the file path or the folder from where that workbook exists. So my path as string is how I'm going to define this one. Then I can also get my name of the workbook from wb.name. So my name as string. Just to give you a few examples, if we use F8 to run through the code, we're going to get a, uh, what it's going to do right now is it's going to attempt to compile the code that's basically digesting all of the lines of code that we've written into a more core computer language that can be quickly read and executed. So all of your code is being analyzed in one go as soon as you try to hit play. And what's happening here is it's identifying that I've made a spelling error. Instead of typing workbook, I've left out an O here. So hit OK. We're going to go up here and fix that. So now if I hit F8, as soon as I get a single yellow line and I've got any executable code, that means that all of my code is compiled and I can run it. It doesn't mean I won't have any errors elsewhere. It just means that the most glaring mistakes and issues have been mostly resolved. So hitting F8, I'm executing each line of code and this last assignment for WB equals active workbook overrides any previous assignments of WB equals something else. So hitting F8, let's skip all the way down to the section talking about data type variables. Now, these, since they're objects, when I hover over them, it doesn't really tell me anything interesting about the variable. Um, but then I go down to here with my height, I hit F8 once, and I can see what value just got assigned to it simply by hovering my mouse over the variable name. And then if I do the same thing with my path, something that you'll notice is very different between this number that we worked with is that there's no quotes around the number 15, while there are quotes around the file path. And then there's also going to be quotes around my name. And the reason for that is because these are string type variables. Now, lastly, let's create a Boolean type variable. If I was to say result equals, and then parentheses, my name equals my path. Well, this is a false statement. And so it should return with the Boolean result of false. But I'm going to assign that to result as Boolean. 
Okay, now what I can do if I don't want to re-execute and evaluate and slowly step through each line of code, I can put a stop break at the line that I want to evaluate. Then I can go up here to the top and hit play. This ran through all of my code, it stopped here, it didn't execute this line. So by default, I see what result started out with, which is false, and then it evaluates the statement once I execute the yellow line of code, and the ending result is false. Now I can change this to my name not equal to my path and then drag my arrow up and watch as it evaluates that this statement is actually true because my name is not equal to my path. And there I have my result. Now I want to show you one last thing before we wrap up this lesson, which is that when we interact with one of these objects, like if I was to type rng dot, I can see any of the methods, parameters, and properties that are associated with that object. I can type dot copy. I can type I can type name. I can do any number of things, and it's going to give me a prompt for all the things that are actually available right there. All right. Lastly, I want to emphasize a very important lesson, which is that every time that I've used the word set and I've assigned an object to an object variable. This is a variable type that's for some reason hard for Excel to drop out of memory when your code stops running and even when you close your workbook. So at the end of your code, you need to type set wb equals nothing. You need to then type set ws equals nothing and set rng equals nothing. If you don't do this, your code could eventually crash from some memory issues and your user would not be very happy. All right, thanks for joining.